Right, so good day class. So today we're going to have a, a simple lecture on financial mark, uh, financial management for architects. So this lecture was taken from the sample income statement and profit plan by Baxia of Zubu Design Associates from the Blueprint Magazine Special Edition 2016. So this is a really good find class. So if you have a copy of that magazine, I suggest that you read it because there's a lot of advices there on how to start your own firm. Okay, so let's start. So this is a sample income statement and profit plan. So you could see that there's a, uh, you could uh, see there that there's a statement for 2015 and 2016 for comparison. So there's a total revenue, direct expenses, it's negative so uh, you deduct that so that's your net revenue then also you have your uh, direct labor uh, for example if you have a firm those would be the, uh, the people that will be uh, involved in the direct drafting of that, a certain project then you have indirect labor let's look at your uh, secretary security guards and others your accounting your human resource department and of course you also have your indirect expenses and then the uh, total of that would be your operating profit. So as you can see, uh, there's an increase in uh, profit in their firm uh, from 2015 to 2016. So 2015 is 1 million and then in 2016 it's 1.9 million. Okay, so uh, the first is the utilization rate. It's the the formula is direct labor over total labor so you're going to use that as, uh, as your key performance indicator to get your utilization rate so for 2015 the direct labor those involved in the project um, it's around uh, 3 million and then over that in the total labor um, that would be including your uh, the salaries for your human resource department, for your accounting, and others. So, yes, 5 million. So, you divide that, you get a utilization rate of 0.60. Okay. Then, for 2016, um, the direct labor is 3.7. Then, the total labor is 6 million. So, if you divide that, you get a utilization rate of 0.63. So, the target is that 65 to 85 percent for designers and technical staff. 65% for the firm as a whole, then in general, higher is better. Okay. So, you can see if you base it on the utilization rate, it's better in 2016 by a, a margin of 0 0.03. Then let's look into overhead rate. So, the formula for overhead rate is overhead over direct labor. So, overhead rate are the fees you charge for your services uh, which must not only cover the cost of direct labor but also your overhead so overhead refers to all indirect expenses of the firm so for 2015 the overhead is 5.1 million and the direct labor is 3, uh, 3 million and you divide that you get an overhead rate of 1.7 then for the key performance indicator for 2016 the overhead is 5.950 million divided by the direct labor which is 3.75 million you get an overhead rate of 1.59 so the target is 1.5 to 1.75 times direct labor which is 150 percent to 175 percent of direct labor so the lower your overhead rate the higher your profit margin so here you can see that in 2015 the overhead rate is 1.7 then it is much lower in 2016 just 1.59 which means that uh, their firm earned more in 2016 compared to 2015 then let's go into the break even rate so the formula is the overhead rate plus 1.0 this, this is for the firm to get break even with the expenses so for uh, the key performance indicator in 2015, you have an overhead uh, rate of 1.7. So overhead rate uh, is just uh, 
plus 1. So 1.7 plus 1, we have a break-even rate of 2.70. Then uh, for 2016, you have 1.59 plus 1. Then you have a break-even rate of 2.59. So take note that for the firm to make 10% profit, they should multiply the break-even amount by 1.1. So the estimated direct labor cost is 2 million. Then you multiply it by the break-even rate for 2015. So you get, so the fee at the firm will break even is 5.4 million. Then to get the uh, break even amount, you multiply by 1.1, as stated here. So with 10% profit margin, you get 5.940 uh, uh, million. Then let's uh, look into the net multiplier. So net multiplier is your net revenue over direct labor. So net multiplier are the measure uh, measures how much net revenue you are generating for every peso spent on direct labor. So to determine, compare the net multiplier to the break even rate. So here we have the net revenue of 9.1 million. So you divide that by your direct labor of 3 million. So you get a net multiplier of 3.03 for 2015. For 2016, you have a net revenue of 11.6 million. You divide that by direct labor cost of 3.75 million. You get a net multiplier 3.09. Uh, so the target is 2.75 to 3.25 or better. So if your net multiplier is less than the uh, break even uh, 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 BR break even, you are operating at a loss. So if your net multiplier is greater than VR, then you are making uh, money. So let's compare. So the, the break even uh, revenue for 2015 is 2.7. Then the net multiplier is uh, 3.03. So each, which means that uh, the net multiplier is greater than the break even revenue, which means that in 2015, the firm is making money. So in 2016, we have a net multiplier of 3.09, then a break-even revenue of 2.59, which means that even in 2016, the firm is also making money. So, but I think in 2016, they are earning more because the net multiplier is 3.09. Then let's look into age accounts uh, receivable. So it tells you that the average time it takes you to collect on fees from the invoice date to the date payment is received. So the formula is the annual average accounts receivable divided by the net revenue divided by 365 days. So in 2015, the annual AR over 12, so the annual age uh, accounts receivable is 12 million divided by 12. So the average accounts receivable for 2015 is 1 million per month. Then in 2015, it's uh, a, uh, I think the form of age account receivable. Uh, then you have an NR net revenue divided by 365 days. And you have a, a 1 million here. So divide by 9.1 million divided by 365 so 1 million over uh, divided by 24,931.50 so the result is 40 point uh, 10 days so that's the average time um, the fees are collected or the uh, age account receivable are collected so the target is 45 to 60 days so invoice age beyond 90 days should be follow up, then 120 days should be considered uh, hot, and then 150 days is uh, critical. Then you have the profit to earnings ratio. The formula is the operating profit divided by the net revenue. So it is an indicator of the firm's effectiveness in completing projects profitably. So you have an operating profit of 1 million then a net revenue of 9.1 million, the profit to earnings ratio is 0 0.11. Then that's in 2015. Then for 2016, uh, they, they have an operating profit of 1.9, the net revenue of 11.6. So 
to the profit per earnings is 0.16. So, the target is equal to or greater than the target profit in the annual profit plan. Historically, a decent average is 0.1 or 10%. So, I think this is already decent. So, that's all class. So, if you want to read more, so I suggest that you purchase that special edition of Blueprint magazine because you think there's a lot of uh, information there on how veteran uh, these well-known architects in the Philippines established uh, their firms and how they operate uh, operate them. Okay, so I hope that um, you're able to learn something from our short lecture. So we'll have an asynchronous lecture uh, uh, for this in the coming uh, days. So if you have any further questions or clarifications, uh, feel free to message me anytime. Then I'll always reply class as long as I'm online and I'm not busy. Okay, so keep safe and see you next week.